Hi, this is Mark Kemper with EMS. In this video, we're going to do a real-world accuracy test of the Creoform MetraScan system. Now, the MetraScan system consists of a couple different uh, measurement tools. This is the actual scan head itself, which is a laser-based scanner and has some sensors on here to pick up those lasers and pick up the 3D shape. Uh, this is great for collecting thousands and thousands of points, or millions of points, really. Um, and then we have the probing system. Now, the probing system is really one point at a time. Think of it more like a portable CMM. So you have a probe tip here um, that you would grab points with. Now, the MetraScan system is really a shop floor metrology tool for both scanning and probing, as I mentioned. And it allows you to go out uh, on the shop floor and scan pretty large objects with this system. So what we're going to do today is just a couple real-world uh, tests to just kind of see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this system. Now, if you don't fully understand how the MetraScan system works, we have some other videos out there that go into great detail and demonstrate that system. But for this demo, we're just going to focus in on, you know, what kind of real world accuracy numbers can we achieve? So the first test we're going to do is a volumetric test. And what we're going to use is a couple artifacts. In this case, these are ball bars and these are very precisely made and then they're measured at the factory uh, with a CMM and uh, there's a couple of numbers uh, on the bar measurements basically from the center of this sphere to that one and then there's also a little cone uh, here for the probe so we will scan the spheres and then we can probe the little cones right there and these numbers are on this uh, this uh, this uh, ball bar uh, the, the actual measurement and a date as to when it was certified and typically this is good for a year you'd send it back and get it recertified so so this is a great way out in the field to be able to check your system to see how it's performing and what we're going to do is we'll scan uh, left to right and kind of get a point to point this way and then we're going to go um, back and forth with a little bit of height to try to give us a, a true volume uh, and you know this would be a realistic of, of a real world where you've got some 3D shape to it. Uh, many times you'll see accuracy, accuracy statements that are just point to point, but that's really not the, the real world. The real world has volume to it. So we'll go ahead and measure these. Now in our first setup, we're going to do these in, in what's called static mode uh, for the MetraScan system. And what static mode means is nothing can move, okay? Um, so there's a camera system that you don't see over there that is tracking both the uh, scan head and the probe. Um, and the way we have it set up right now, nothing can move. If anything moves, that's going to affect our accuracy. And this is uh, very similar to like a CMM or an ARM-based system where everything has to be kind of locked down. Um, after this, we'll go and do it in dynamic mode, and we'll, we'll get to that and explain how that works. So let's go ahead and um, take our first set of measurements. And what we're going to do is scan. And we just kind of point the system, uh, point the scan head at it. And we're just going to scan the spheres uh, like you see here. And it's all just uh, line of sight. So we're just going to kind of move around it. We don't have to get the, the complete sphere, just enough of it. Um, you know, maybe a third of it is, is good enough. And the beauty of the MetraScan system is I can work all around and scan it and jump around and get it, okay? And you can't overscan it, so that should be good, okay? So what we'll do next is we'll go in the VX Element software and we will um, take a look and do some measurements on uh, these, these spheres. So, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit um, some CAD geometry, basically a sphere, through them and then we will uh, uh, measure it. So that'll allow us to be able to measure it. So we simply click and create a sphere, create our second sphere, our third sphere, and then our fourth sphere. So now we've created that CAD geometry. Now we can actually measure between it. So we'll go back in and say uh, measure distance. And I'm doing all this in the um, VX Elements software. This is the standard software that, that comes with the scanner. 
allows you to do some basic things. So we're going to do a point to point measurement and we'll take sphere one and measure that to sphere two and we'll create a measurement and then we'll do a second one to sphere three to sphere four and create a measurement. So I have my two measurements here and I have the numbers from the ball bar in a spreadsheet um, and that just makes it easy for me to calculate this. So for the first one, we measured 25.5303 and for the second bar, 25.3764. Okay, so the difference uh, in the uh, first bar, uh, which is actually going up uh, this distance, uh, our difference was uh, uh, six tenths of one thousand. So basically, a half half of a half a thousandth of an inch was that measurement, and then our other one was just over a thousandth of an inch. So when you look at the accuracy statement for the uh, MetraScan system. Um, you'll hear numbers of a, a two thousandths of an inch volumetric accuracy, but that's referring to a 16 meter volume, basically where the camera system can see while you're scanning. So the fact that we're coming in well under that would make sense. We are scanning something smaller, um, but pretty consistent with the results. So overall that looks pretty good. Uh, next we'll go ahead and set up and uh, uh, do a probe measurement and see what that looks like. Okay, so now for the next test will be the uh, probing system and uh, we're going to do the same thing again, only this time we're going to probe the, uh, the cones on these bars. So again, we're in static mode, so uh, uh, now that we're actually going to be touching it, uh, we have to be very careful we don't move things around because if anything gets moved, it's going to affect our accuracy. And that's one of the challenges with, with normal systems. So what I'm going to do is come over here and uh, drop it in the cone push the button, accept that point, and then reach over, drop it in here, accept that point. We'll come over here, and then finally up here. And I'm trying to be very careful to not move anything around. So we've collected those four points. Let's go ahead and measure them and see how those numbers look. So now that we have those points, we'll come in and go to uh, distance. Uh, we'll measure point one to point two and create a measurement and then point three to point four and create a measurement and we'll take a look at how. So there's our two measurements. And again, I've got a spreadsheet here so we can put that in as 20 point five, three, eight, two, and 20.4510. Um, so if you look at our results, uh, the first measurement uh, was within uh, two thousandths of an inch, and the second one was within about one and a half thousand. So again, the, uh, the MetraScan has a huge volume it can scan within, um, and in that uh, entire volumetric accuracy, um, two thousandths of an inch is uh, what, uh, what the manufacturer states. So again, we're within that tolerance. So uh, again, in static mode, we got some pretty good numbers. Um, next, we're going to show the uh, dynamic mode and um, let's see how that turns out. All right, for our next test, we are going to measure uh, one of the ball bars again, but this time we're going to do it in what's called dynamic mode. And now, what dynamic mode is, uh, with the MetraScan system is a way you set up the system that actually allows things to move around while you're scanning them and still hold that accuracy. So it's a pretty unique setup and really uh, why we say this is shop floor friendly uh, is because on most shop floors you have vibration, you have noise, you have things moving around. It is not the perfect uh, world environment for inspecting. Um, and this is truly a system that can work out on the shop floor. So what we're about to do, you really can't do with any other system. So I'm going to take this ball bar and I'm going to hold it in my hand and I'm going to scan it. Okay. And you'll see, uh, there's, you know, there's no way, um, that I can certainly hold this thing, uh, you know, 
very steady. So on most systems, uh, this would be absolutely impossible to do, okay? So what's basically going on here is that camera system is tracking both the scan head and the bar at the same time and what we call dynamic referencing. So pretty much impossible with any other system. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what kind of numbers we got with the dynamic referencing. So we're going to do the same thing again. Uh, we're going to come in and we are going to create some basic entities. Again, we're going to create those uh, spheres. Okay, so we create sphere one, create sphere two, and then we are going to measure the distance between those two spheres, uh, point to point. Sphere one, sphere two, create a measurement. Going back to our sheet, 25.3749 uh, is a difference of less than half the foul, 0 .0003. Uh, was the measurements. We actually got a better, I think a better measurement than in static mode, which again, when we get down to this level of accuracy, any movement, to me pushing or touching the table, anything like that can certainly throw it off when we're talking about these kind of numbers. So again, I literally held that thing in my hand while it was moving around and, and got just an incredible, incredible numbers. And that's the whole beauty of this dynamic referencing system. So less than uh, uh, half a thou uh, holding it and measuring about 20 inches apart. So very impressive uh, system. So last thing we'll do, let's try to do the same thing with the probing system and see what kind of numbers we get. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do that same test uh, with the probe. Uh, again, running that, uh, that dynamic uh, referencing uh, mode. So again, I'll hold on to the uh, ball bar. Uh, I'm going to drop it into the cone and we'll take a, take a point. And then we'll go ahead and take our second point. And we'll go ahead and measure those and see what kind of numbers we come up with. So again, we'll come in here and we will uh, do a distance and in this case point point and create that value. And let's go ahead and see how that compares once again to our spreadsheet. So 20.4481 of uh, a difference of just over a thousandth of an inch. Uh, 0 0.0012 uh, is the number we came up with. So again, very impressive when you think about what we're doing. Uh, basically, you would have a part that might be moving around and the, the measurement system, in this case the probe, is also moving around and we're still getting incredible numbers um, uh, from this system. And again, that volume, 16 meter volumetric accuracy, um, you should be able to expect numbers like this. So just a, a great system, very accurate, again, with the ability to measure a very large volume out on the shop floor uh, in a real world situation where you have, you know, again, vibration, harshness, all, all types of things. So great, great numbers out of the Metriscan system. Okay, so this wraps up this video. We did a quick real world test of the Metriscan system, uh, both 3D scanning and probing. Uh, we did two setups, a static mode, uh, which would really uh, simulate most measurement systems out there. Uh, got you know very good numbers with that. And then we did the dynamic mode, which really no other system can do. And that was basically measuring an object while it was moving around and had you know excellent numbers on that as well. So just an awesome system for you know whether it's shop floor or in a lab or, or really any environment. Uh, it is great for scanning and probing for both uh, reverse engineering and inspection.